The day the dinosaurs died. Today's topic is extinction events with particular emphasis on the end Cretaceous extinction when the dinosaurs all died out. Good evening. It's evening for me anyway. So I'm not sure where this finds you or what time this finds you, but good evening, good day, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it happens to be. So welcome to the next Dinozone video. And today's topic is extinction events with particular emphasis on the end Cretaceous extinction when the dinosaurs all died out. So I guess we need an official topic, the day the dinosaurs died, the end Cretaceous extinction event. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at some of the extinction events. There have been five major extinction events in Earth's history. There was a book written by Richard Leakey called The Sixth Extinction. And that's about how humans are driving the sixth great extinction event on planet Earth. But I'm not going to get into that on this video. At the moment, we're just going to look at those five major extinction events and with particular emphasis on the end Cretaceous event that led to the demise, the extinction of the dinosaurs. Okay, seeing that this is the dinosaur and we're here to talk about dinosaurs and paleontology, so we need to talk about how the dinosaurs disappeared from the face of the earth. All right, so let's dive right in. So the first event was the end order vision extinction event, which took place around 450 million years ago, where cooling climate and glaciation led to the extinction of 86% of all life on earth. So maybe I just need to take a little bit of a digress. The geological time is divided up into a whole bunch of different kind of different ways of subdividing it. But the big, the geological periods up to, I think it's 541 million years ago, everything before that's known as the, um, the pre-Cambrian. And then after that, right up to the present, we have the Cambrian or Division Silurian Devonian. There's a silly rhyme that goes, camels often sit down carefully, perhaps their joints creak. So each letter stands for the start of the one of these periods. So Cambrian or Divitian Silurian Devonian. Camels often sit down carefully. <laughs> Carbon, Carboniferous, Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. And then that was the last major extinction event. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. And then after that, it was known as the tertiary or in the more modern terms, the paleogene. All right, so camels often sit down carefully, perhaps their joints creak. Okay, so you're going to learn that silly rhyme off by heart. So when I talk about that end order vision event that took place about 450 million years ago with glaciation and global cooling that led to the extinction of 86% of all life on Earth. All right, so the next extinction event was about 360 million years ago, the late Devonian event, and that caused 75% of all marine species to go extinct. And that was thanks to an anoxic event. And scientists are still trying to work out what was going on at the time. In fact, all these extinction events are all trying to work out what was going on. There's so much work that has to be done. So anoxic means lack of oxygen. So lack of oxygen in the oceans driving the many, many, many marine species, 75% of all marine species to extinction. The next major extinction event was the end Permian event. And the Permian ended about 251.2 million years ago. So the end Permian extinction event is the granddaddy of them all. 96% of all marine species went extinct and 70% of terrestrial, that means land living species, went extinct. It was called the Great Dying. And you can find, I'm in here in South Africa, and if you drive through the Karoo, which is a most magnificent accumulation of sediment, the Karoo Basin, which was an inland sea at one stage. And it's a 350 million year unbroken record of geology and life and evolution. You can see these sandstones and they're just clean white sandstones. There's no, it, it, it was an arid, what's the word, a, a period after that event when, well, these are post-Permian sediments that are just devoid of life and trace fossils and fossils. It's just these clear cross-bedded sandstones which kind of give a, an insight into what had actually gone on. So 96% of all marine species had gone extinct and over 75% of terrestrial species. That was the great dying. But that opened up the doors to what is called the Mesozoic, which is when the dinosaurs lived. So the Mesozoic is made up going back to our, our rhyme or our our geological periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So the Jurassic is, of course, always famous because of all those movies. But the Mesozoic is made up of the, of the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. At the end of the Permian, that predated, it came before the, the, the Mesozoic, which means middle life, and then we had the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. 
I'm trying to fit in all these little geological stories as we go, so you don't get too confused. Okay, so let's press on. Here's the next one coming. Around 200 million years ago, we had the, the end Triassic extinction event. So this was caused by lots of meteorite impacts, volcanic eruptions, climate change, and it marked the end of a number of the early dinosaur species. So that was around 200 million years ago. So before we dive into the final extinction event, which is why we are all here. If we haven't met before, I'm Gerald Davey. I head up the Dinozone, the Dinozone Dinosaur Park and the Geo Center. So if you're in the vicinity, come and swing by and check out our replica of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which we call Marmaduke. And you can come and check out the rocks and the minerals and the fossils. Of course, Marmaduke. And uh, there's a whole lot of stuff there. We go on a three and a half billion year old journey. You can dig up a dinosaur. You can paint some fossils and learn a huge amount about earth science and fossils and dinosaurs and paleontology. So what's not to like about that? So we're looking forward to you coming to visit. And um, I know you, probably, you could be watching this from anywhere in the world. So if you can't physically visit us, we're just going to have to find each other here on YouTube. So stay tuned to more videos on paleontology and dinosaurs and to some extent earth science right here at the Dinozone. Okay, but we'll talk more about these things later on in the video. What I do have to say is if you stick around to the end, we, this is the second of a series of 10 videos and we're giving away the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. But to get the keys to the dinosaur kingdom, you're going to have to stick around to the end. I'm going to give you a numerical code, which you're going to put into the cipher, which is going to open the doors to the dinosaur kingdom. So yeah, there's a link below. I'm going to put it in the, in the description so you can download a PDF. So it's a little, it's not a spreadsheet, but it's a little table and you can list the name of the video and you can actually put the code there. And once you've got all 10 of them, then you can punch that into the cipher and you're going to get the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. Eh? How cool is that? All right, so I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, so let's dive into the last great extinction event that led to the demise of the dinosaurs. So the end Cretaceous extinction event took place 66 million years ago. It was one of the most catastrophic extinction events in Earth history and over 75% of all life died on Earth, including the dinosaurs. And the marine species, the ichthyosaurs and the plesiosaurs and the pterosaurs, they all went extinct. And a whole host of other creatures too, like the ammonites, they all went along with the dinosaurs, which was quite a tragedy. So let's look as to why this happens. Our quest to unravel the secrets of the end Cretaceous extinction takes us back to... You know, geologists knew that these extinction events had taken place. There were no dinosaur fossils to be found in the geological record after a certain time. But a very clever American scientist, a physicist, Louis Alvarez, and his son, Walter, um, they unraveled or un unlocked some of these secrets. So as far as I remember, the son, Walter, discovered this layer of dark rock shale in Italy. In fact, in a road cutting outside the town of Gabbio. So Walter discovered this and he pulled his father in, who was the physicist, and they discovered that there were very, very high iridium levels in the rock. So iridium is, a, is an element, it doesn't occur in great abundance on the Earth's crust or in the Earth's crust, but it's found in great abundance in meteorites and asteroids and extraterrestrial bodies, meteorites and comets. So that layer is very famous from a geological point of view and from a paleontological point of view, and it's called the Gabbio layer. And you can go to Italy and see this layer if you want. In fact, I need to go and make a trip. I'm looking forward to that. Eh? Going to Italy is the most fantastic thing. The food's great, the scenery's beautiful, the locals are all hospitable. Fantastic place. All right, so we're not rambling on about Italy here. We're going to be talking about the Gabbio layer and these high iridium concentrations in this dark layer. So Louis Alvarez, being who he is, the physicist, he worked out that this rock layer did have very high iridium levels. And they've since found of exactly the same age all around the world high iridium levels. And we know that high iridium levels occur in meteorites and comets, but it's very, generally speaking, very low concentrations on Earth. So they scratched their heads and they thought, how could this be? They also found little globules of glass called tectites. And those form from high impact. When something hits planet Earth at great velocity, you get these tectites forming. And they found some of these little globules, glassy globules in that Gabbio layer. So what does this all mean? And the only conclusion they could come up with was that there'd been a massive impact 
somewhere on planet Earth that had driven all this debris into the atmosphere. And what the Gabio layer represented and similar layers elsewhere in the world was the fallout from this meteorite asteroid impact. And that sparked a whole lot of curiosity. And then other geologists and earth scientists went looking for the location of this meteorite impact. And lo and behold, after lots of searching, they found a crater off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And that crater is now known as the Chicxulub Crater. And it's buried under a lot of younger sediment, but that the age of that meteorite crater is exactly 66 million years. And so the conclusion is, and it's the right size too, so the conclusion was that the extinction was driven thanks to this meteorite impact, this asteroid impact, and the crater that fits the bill lies in the Gulf of Mexico off the Yucatan Peninsula, and it's called the Chicxulub Impact Crater. So well done to Alvarez and all those geologists, or well, the two Alvarezes and all those geologists. And that work was done, or well, that discovery of that Gabiole was back in the 1970s. When I was at university, it was still kind of early early days on that work and we would have visiting professors coming from all around the world and talking about this meteorite impact and it was all exciting stuff. <laughs> now it's kind of a bit old hat but, um, but back in the day it was re really exciting. There were other things also happening at the same time in India there was the um, outpouring of lava in what is called the Deccan Trap. So those are flood basalts. So those flooded out over vast areas and they were also probably pumping huge amounts of ash and debris into the atmosphere. So it might not have just totally been the impact, it might have been other environmental pressures that helped drive the dinosaurs and much of life, 75% of life to extinction. So that Gabio layer marks what's called the, we used to know it as the KT boundary, the Cretaceous in German. Cretaceous is spelled with a K. <laughs> so the Cretaceous tertiary boundary, the KT boundary. It's now known as the K Paleogene, the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary, or you see it written KPG. But everybody understands if you write KT or KPG, it doesn't matter. So the KT KPG boundary marks the end of the Cretaceous and the extinction of the dinosaurs, and everything after that is called the Paleogene. And that opened up the world to be colonized by mammals. There's a fantastic book by Steve Brissata, quite a famous paleontologist, and I'm going to show you a picture of his new book. So a mate of mine, Dr. Sawyer, from England, he came out, I've known him since school days, and he presented me with this fantastic book um, called The Rise and Reign of the Mammals. So I'd, re I'd read Brazati's other book called the, um, what, the Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, I think. And so now I'm reading the second one about the rise and reign of the mammals. So it's a fascinating read, so I would recommend it to you. So the layer, the dark layer with its very high iridium content is the smoking gun of extinction that smoking gun of that meteorite impact that took place and or led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. So of course as this huge impact takes place and there's tsunamis and the air is filled up with debris and there are wildfires and it throws the planet's atmosphere into a chaotic state. Massive shock waves, debris, ash in the air. But yeah, that was the immediate effect. But now the secondary effects was that Earth kind of suffered a nuclear winter where all this dust, all this debris was thrown up into the atmosphere and that blocked out the sun's light. And then we started to get collapse of the, of the ecosystems. Plants weren't getting enough sunlight. They stopped, they started to die. There was a shortage of food. And so all those environmental pressures started to uh, lead to the demise of the dinosaurs and lots of other life. Obviously when the sun's been blotted out by all this debris, global temperatures also start to fall. So it wasn't a great time to be around. So the dinosaurs and, and a host of other species really started to face some challenges thanks to that meteorite impact. So habitat destruction, collapse of the food chain, a shortage of food, and extreme climate conditions. They all added up and it might have been exacerbated by the outpouring of all that lava and the Deccan traps in India. Also pouring massive amounts of ash, volcanic ash into the atmosphere. So the end Cretaceous extinction event, as we've mentioned several times already, led to the demise of the age of dinosaurs and much other life besides. Except for the avian dinosaurs, the birds that made it through that extinction event, and the birds, being the descendants of dinosaurs, are with us today, and what magnificent creatures they are. So that extinction, and we touched on this earlier, the extinction of the dinosaurs then opened up the world to be colonized by the mammals. So thanks to that, you are here now and I'm here now, and the world is ruled by the mammals. The rise and reign of the mammals. Going back to Steve Brissati's book, The Rise and Reign of the Mammals. So get yourself a copy. I'm not getting any commissions for that. I'm just recommending it to you as a, as a good and accessible read.
Louis Alvarez and his son Walter's research then opened up the door for all sorts of additional research too. So those guys also paved the way and they gave us insights into that end Cretaceous extinction event and made scientists go pursue other lines of evidence and study this thing and kind of drove interest in this thing. And of course they went and looked for that Chicxulub crater of the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico too. There are some dissenting voices as to this theory though, but um, it's widely believed amongst earth scientists and paleontologists that it was that event that led to the demise of the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. So we're not going to be controversial in this little video. We're just talking about what is currently mainstream theory from a geological point of view. All right, so we're having fun here, rolling along on a Monday night. And so boys and girls, we've now learned something about extinction events in general and the end Cretaceous extinction event in particular. A time of colossal change that forever altered life on our planet and led to us as human beings and mammals. So let's remember the incredible legacy of the dinosaurs though and being paleontologists and dinosaur nuts. They've given us endless amounts of entertainment and endless amounts of interest. Of course drove us or made us or helped us or pushed us to make the dinosaur and to make these little videos. So thanks to the dinosaurs. We're sorry that you went extinct. It's probably just as well that you did because you, those T-Rexes would probably come and eat us as a snack. But it did open up the way for the mammals. So we all hear thanks to the demise of the dinosaurs and an extinction event that led to that or caused that. Right, so that brings me to the end of this little video, I think. So I just have one thing left to do and that's to give you the keys, the code, this video's code to the, uh, the dinosaur kingdom. So grab your pen and write this down and keep it somewhere safe. So the number is, and I have to read it, so excuse me. The number is 4873631. 4873631. So that's the code for the second video. Please go and watch the first video. That's the one on pterosaurs. I'll put the link. I think I'm going to put it up here. And if this doesn't pop up here, I'll put the I'll put the link in the description below. And so enjoy watching that. Of course, we've got all the other videos that we've got uh, on paleontology too. So it would be lovely if you were to go and watch all of those and please subscribe and share and like. It's obviously all good for the algorithm. It's fantastic for us. It's really hard work making these videos, but we do love it. So, but for you to subscribe and leave your comments are just, oh, just so gratifying. So we're looking forward to those comments. And please ring that bell because even when you subscribe, sometimes the algorithm doesn't actually tell you that we've posted up a new video unless you actually have clicked that notification button. So do that too while, while you're here. So I can actually hear the thing ringing right now. Ding. All right. So thank you for that. And um, that's the end of this little video. So I am going to sign out and leave you in peace. So thank you for spending time with us. It's been fantastic having you along on this little journey. And um, I'm going to tell you more about the dinosaur kingdom in the later videos. So that's also a good reason to stick around and see what happens as we unveil what's going to happen at the dinosaur. All right, so I'm going to leave it right there. So look after yourselves and I will see you on the third video of the series of the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. So until then, take care of yourselves. Eyes to the skies because you don't know when the next meteorite's going to be coming in. So look after yourself there and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.